Welcome to Hope Sabbath School, an in-depth, interactive study of the Word of God. We're in the middle of a series, God's Mission, My Mission, seeing the heart of God to bring a revelation of His love to everyone on planet Earth and save as many as possible, as many as will believe in His grace and mercy. Our topic today, well, we're looking at an ancient prophet named Jonah and excuses to avoid mission. That's not to give you ideas, but to see how we can make it past those excuses. So welcome to Hope Sabbath School and welcome to the team. Good to be together again. Take a look at each other there. You look <laughs> like the whole world. And that's what Hope Sabbath School is about, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Every nation, kindred, tongue of people coming together to study the Word of God. We've got some team members joining us remotely. Sabina, great to have you back with us. Glad you're here today. Leah, good to see you again. And Hope, good to see you, Hope. We're glad you're here for Hope Sabbath School today. And we've got emails from a few people around the world. And can I ask you to write to us, sshope at hopetv.org. Share with us how you're blessed. You can even send us a digital picture of your family, maybe a study group that you're leading. We want to see how God is blessing you through a study of His Word. Here's a note from Virginia in the United States of America. Denise writes and says, I've wanted to send you a message for a while. So while watching Hope Sabbath School this Friday evening, it seemed like a perfect time. I've so enjoyed the different teachers on Hope Sabbath School. Well, I happen to be teaching today, but there's quite a few teachers even in our group today. I have to admit, it's taken a while for me to get used to the new set. Well, you're right. We used the set for about 10 years till it started falling apart. And we have an amazing new set. Took a while, but I think it was probably time for an update, said Denise. <laughs> I think the people that moved the old set around would agree with you. Hope Channel has always had beautiful sets and such professional filming and programming. I consider it an honor to help in a small way with electronic giving. Mm -hmm. May God continue to lead and guide you all. Well, Denise, thanks for writing to us from Virginia in the, here in the United States of America. Well, across the ocean in uh, Zambia, Letty writes, and she says, greetings, Hope Sabbath School family. Hello. We gave Letty the wave. She says, and the whole Hope Sabbath School family around the world and the entire production team. So <laughs> we want to wave to them too. The study of the Bible has been a huge blessing in my life. Mm. I've put it upon myself to download the weekly programs and to share them on many platforms with my friends, family, and the entire church. Amen. 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 What do we call that? That's joining God in His mission, right? Yeah. That's what this series is all about. If it will ever be possible, writes Letty from Zambia, I would love to be part of the team. May God bless your ministry. Pray for me as I also pray for you. Well, I want to tell you, Letty, and I know the team agrees, you are part of the team, right? Mm -hmm. You're doing there in Zambia what we can't do in this country mm -hmm. uh, for you people. Mm -hmm. Thank you for writing to us. Here's a note from a donor couple in Jamaica, and they write and say, Christian greetings from the beautiful island of Jamaica. Mm -hmm. My husband and I are pensioners. That means that they're on retirement. But we're thankful to the Lord for the work He has done raising up Hope Channel around the world. We are positive that many souls are being blessed daily by the various programs, especially Hope Sabbath School. Well, wow, that's why they wrote to us. Thank you for your commitment and dedication. Enclosed is the contribution toward the evangelistic outreach. Mm. That's why we wow. exist, right? Yes. May the Lord continue to bless Hope Channel and the leaders as you continue to allow the Holy Spirit to use you for God's honor and glory. Amen. 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 And a donation of $100. Amen. To bless the ministry. Thank you, Jamaica, for being part of the great miracle. And thank you to each one of you. 
who say, I want to be part. Maybe you've been thinking about it. You can go to our website, hopetv.org slash hopess. Some of you watch the program there. Click on the donate button and say, dear Lord, bless the global evangelistic media ministry of Hope Sabbath School. One last note. I don't remember the last time we got an email from Cuba. Mm -hmm. Not the first time, I know, but hello, Hope Sabbath School team, writes Adiel from Cuba. I've been watching your program, and I'm glad God is using you for the precious work of sharing His message. God bless you. Jesus is coming soon. Amen. Well, Adiel, thanks for writing to us from Cuba. Does it encourage you to hear from all these different yes. parts of the world? really is amazing. We realize that many are listening in a second language, mm -hmm. which is why, those of you watching from around the world, we try to speak slowly and clearly because we want to thank you for listening to us in maybe a language that maybe your second or third language. But the Holy Spirit helps us, doesn't He, mm -hmm. as we study the Word together. Well, right now we need your help to sing our theme song. It's a 3,000-year-old scripture song. My wife put a new tune to it. It's kind of a happy tune, and it speaks about mission because it says in Psalm 9, verses 1 and 2, I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of all your marvelous works. We join God in His mission. Let's sing it together. Well, we're going to study today about a prophet who didn't want to tell of all God's marvelous works. In fact, he wasn't glad in rejoicing in the Lord either. But I think there'll be some lessons that will help us to join God in His mission. Let's sing our song together again. I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of all your marvelous works. I will be glad Amen. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, what a privilege it is not only to praise you with our whole heart, for you are worthy of our praise, but also to tell of all your marvelous works, to join you in your mission to share your immeasurable, unfailing love with the world. Today, as we look at an ancient prophet, Jonah, and excuses for mission, I pray that, that you would help us to find freedom from those things that hinder us from being the witnesses that you've called us to be for you. I thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, we're considering Jonah, and we'll learn about him mm -hmm. primarily in the book that bears his name, the book of Jonah. It's a small book near the end of the Hebrew Scriptures. I was in the city of Joppa just uh, recently, and several important things happened in Joppa. One of them was someone was raised from the dead mm -hmm. by the power of Jesus' name. Do you remember who that was? It was Dorcas, raised to life in Joppa. Uh, what else happened? Well, Peter had a vision in Joppa mm -hmm. that, that he should not call any person unclean mm -hmm. when a message came from a centurion, you remember? Mm -hmm. But perhaps Joppa's best known as being a place where Jonah went to try to run away from God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we're going to consider the excuses he made and the excuses 
some others may make to avoid mission, but hopefully we can get past them. Mm -hmm. We might even identify some excuses that we have made in the past or may still make. Mm -hmm. So Jonah chapter 1. Samuel, if you could begin our study today in Jonah chapter 1 and read for us the first three verses. I'm reading from the English Standard Version, and it reads, Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it, for their evil has come up before me. But Jonah rose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down into it, to go with them to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. Mm. Now, uh, what do we know about the Ninevites, uh, the mm. Assyrian mm. Empire? Mm -hmm. uh, what, what did Jonah probably know about them too? Well, if we just had these verses, mm -hmm. oh, what do we know? The Lord says something. What do we know? We know that they were wicked. wicked. They were wicked. Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, even if we didn't have any details, we would say they're very wicked. Uh, but Sabina, I'm going to ask you to find another little book. It's right there in the Minor Prophets after the book of Jonah, Micah, and then Nahum. It's, some of these little books are hard to find. <laughs> but Nahum chapter 1 and verse 1, and then I'll have you read chapter 3, verses 1 to 4. We learn a little more about Nineveh. Okay, so I'll be reading from the New International Version in uh, Nahum verse 1 says, A prophecy concerning Nineveh, the book of the vision of Nahum to el -Koshite. And then chapter 3, verses 1 to 4 says, Ho to the city of blood, full of lies, full of plunder, never without victims, the crack of whips, the clatter of wheels, galloping horses and jolting chariots, charging cavalry, flashing swords and glittering spears, many casualties, piles of dead, bodies without number, people stumbling over the corpses, all because of the wanton lust of a prostitute, alluring the mistress of sorceries who enslaved nations by her prostitution and peoples by her witchcraft. Mm. What do you think about this city? <laughs> one of the excuses mm. that someone might make, and perhaps one of the motivations for Jonah to say, let me get a boat anywhere uh, in the other direction, is because of mm. fear, fear. Yeah. right? I mean, these were a fearful people. But, but if, uh, if Jonah had remembered something of the Lord's work, it might have helped him to find freedom mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from his fears. Let's go back to 2 Kings chapter 19. And Travis, would you be willing to read for us 2 Kings 19, verses 32 to 37. Sometimes when we are tempted to be afraid, we need to remember what God has done. Yes. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Therefore, thus says the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, he shall not come into this city, nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with a shield, nor build a siege around it, um, or mound against it. By the way that he came, by the same shall he return, and he shall not come into this city, says the Lord. For I will defend this city to save it, for my own sake, and for my servant David's sake. And it came to pass on a certain night that the angel of the Lord went out and killed in the camp of the Assyrians 185,000. Mm. And when people arose early in the morning, there were corpses all dead. Mm. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, departed and went away, returning home, and remained at Nineveh. Now it came to pass, as he worshipped in his temple of Nisroch, his god, that his sons Adoramelech and Sharazer struck him down with a sword, and they escaped into the land of Ararat. 
Then Esarhaddon, his son, reigned in his place. Some of us are very happy that you read that text. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of difficult names there. Thank you. Um, you can go, and I was uh, in Israel just recently, and you can see reliefs uh, in museums of devastation that the Assyrians brought, even in Israel. Mm -hmm. uh, but the Lord delivered His people there in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. So, if that memory was there, why would the prophet Jonah be so fearful? What do you think? Mm -hmm. Leah, what do you think? He, he knew how God had delivered in the past. The Assyrian kingdom continues to resurface. So I think there was probably a fear that, well, why did they come back? If God struck them down once, why do they keep coming back? There's a lot of fear that comes when something kind of rears its ugly head, as we say. Mm, okay, good point. In other words, maybe they're coming back for revenge. God delivered us in the past, but can we be certain that He'll deliver again? Well, I'm going, I'm actually going to them now. What do you think, Jason? Yeah, Derek, I think it could be a combination of fear and also feeling like they don't deserve it because they're so wicked. We're going to come to the don't deserve it in a minute, but the fear thing would be what? Be you've been in you've been in the military, right? right. You hear about these people, right? It's uh, and you won one battle mm -hmm. by the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would be overwhelming, you know, because of the things you heard and feeling like you know that I'm I can't do this, you know, mm -hmm. feeling inadequate in that sense. Mm. Nancy. Also, there's one of him against a whole <laughs> city, you I know. Mean, but he's forgetting that he's with God, and you know, with sure. God on our side. Sure. I mean, uh, Sabina read that description in Nahum. It was pretty overwhelming, oh, wasn't yeah, it? Yes. It was very much sure. so. Travis? So I think if we're going to be hard on Jonah, we're going to have to be hard on Elijah, mm -hmm. the same who is, you know, slow all the prophets of Baal and then runs from a queen. Right. So, so we could be hard on Jonah. But there are other prophets. I mean, Elijah was a, he was quite a prophet of God and he was afraid of, of Jezebel. So maybe there are times, I see your hand raised, because that same Elijah would stretch his body over a lifeless child and, right. and he would be raised to life, mm. right? And yet he does run from Jezebel and yet later God deals with Jezebel. I mean, God, there's nothing too hard for God, right? Yeah. But you're saying one time we might feel stronger and another time yeah. overwhelmed by fear? I think the difference is, is where I'm placing my eyes mm -hmm. on evidence that God exists and He's led me so far or on what I can see presently, which doesn't, can change in an instant when God's in it. I'm remembering a quotation, lots of hands raised, this is great, but I remember we have nothing to fear for the future. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Except as we shall forget yeah. Yeah. the way the Lord has led us and His teaching yes. in our past yes. history. So maybe in that moment you, you talk about focus. Yes. We, we, we shift our focus even though the evidence is still there, right? Yeah. Now a couple more and then I want to ask, is there, Travis you said let's not be too hard on him. Can you think of a time when, when fear got the best of you in a challenging mission assignment? John? You know, going back to the quote that you just uh, recited, uh, Jonah must have forgotten about the stories of how God delivered mm. uh, them from the Assyrians. And also, Jonah, mm. uh, he must have thought to himself, I mean, God did it. Even if he had remembered, God did it before, would he do that again? Mm. And at times, you know, in our own lives, we think like that. Okay, yes, God gave me that victory back then uh, in reaching this person, but would he do that again? And so those are some reasons that could be why Jonah was fearful. We're going to have to give a testimony time. Honest time, some of you have been in difficult places on mission trips or long-term assignments. Uh, Sabina, you're in a long-term ministry assignment. Can anybody think of a time when you felt fear kind of well up? Like, whoa, Addison, you're nodding and smiling. Uh, when I was 13 years old, so this goes way back now, I remember sharing with a group of about 50 to 60 people from, from the public about the sanctuary message, about Exodus 25 and, you know, that, that important uh, topic. And it was one of my first times I'd ever spoken publicly. 
And I remember, I remember human, human emotion taking over in that moment. Mm -hmm. And I was, it was like a paralysis. I was just paralyzed with fear. <laughs> and, uh, you know, 13 years old, you know, there's still a, anyway, I love, I love this story. Mm. Uh, Joan, it reminds and you me weren't in Papua New Guinea, or and you were you were actually no, I was I was on home, your home island. I was yes, I was on Vancouver Island, mm. Mm. and in Canada. So sometimes fear might might come for different reasons, but but you felt that, right? Mm. Anybody else uh, can think of a time, John? No, the, I leave the country unnamed, but I was in a certain country, uh, going door to door, uh, giving out Christian literature and praying with them, and soon there were some certain other religious extremists. Uh, who who came and they took us to the police station, mm. and during that time, you know, me and my friends, we, we were quite fearful as to what was going to happen next. Mm. But you know, the Lord amazingly delivered by sending some other people who came to the rescue. But the fear came. Yes, Sabina, you think of a time. Yes, um, I think that one of the times where I felt the, felt the most fearful was actually when God uh, invited me to leave my my job back uh in the day and to go into full-time ministry and for me it was a very challenging request from god because i had lots of uh uncertainties about my future you know how he would provide for me how would ministry look like for me and uh, it took me maybe maybe about half a year to take a step further that he had already impressed upon my heart even though I had like a strong sense of calling since I was a teenager, it was at 28 only that I sensed that he was directly indicating me a next move. Mm -hmm. And for me to respond to this move, it took me, as I said, like more than half a year. I asked for some evidence from God and I really had a hard time trusting that he was the one speaking to me. So I eventually responded, by, but I was quite fearful at the time. I was quite fearful at uh, my family's judgment. I was quite fearful at not having enough to provide for myself in the future. I was quite fearful of what, where all this would end. And, you know, I'm thankful now has 10 years almost have gone by and mm. God is good. So. so I guess one thing, and we're going to move on to another excuse after uh, just a moment here. Uh, we ought to be sympathetic, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. compassionate towards people who may wrestle with some fears because mm -hmm. we've also wrestled That's with right. fears, right? So we're not judging Jonah or anyone else, but we're saying, how do we make it past the fear? And that's my final question for us before we move to the second excuse. Fears will come, That's right? right? Um, how do I make it past that fear? If it's clear that God has given me a mission, mm -hmm. God has asked me to do something. Nancy? We have to remember what we're dealing with the great controversy between good and evil in the universe is real. And so when we remember what it's about and whose side we're on, it will give us courage. Um, I wanted to mention that um, one of the fears we can, one situation in which we may feel fearful is when we're among peers that know, have the same head knowledge about God, but perhaps not the same the heart knowledge and the heart experience. Mm -hmm. And so we may feel like, well, I don't want to, it's not cool maybe to mm -hmm. stand out and be bold for God. Mm -hmm. But when we really understand um, what's happening and what what is at stake and who's on our side, we will be bold. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to ask Hope because Hope, you're today the youngest member of our team. <laughs> I know you, um, you've done ministry, you've had a youth prayer group that you lead. Uh, were there ever times that you felt fearful? And, and if so, how did you make it past that? Mm. One time that comes to my mind for sure is when I was doing some canvassing, um, and which that is selling Christian books door to door. And I was in a neighborhood that was a little bit um, lower class. And I just, I remember feeling so afraid and I actually called my leader um, and I was just like, I can't do this. And I remember I just have had to hold on to the Bible promises. Mm. Um, and that was like the only thing that could get me through that. And um, one verse that actually sticks out in my mind is Psalm 34, 4. And mm. it says, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my Amen. fears. Amen. And when we seek God in our fear, not waiting till after we like freaked out and then coming to him but seeking him well, we're afraid. I think that's something that 
it's really important just keeping that connection with him because he is the only one who can free us from our fears. Thank Amen. you so much. Well, that's one of my wife's scripture songs. I yeah. sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me. So how do I find freedom from my fears? The answer is not by trying harder, mm -hmm. right? God is the one who can deliver us from all our fears. Samuel? And you know, here in the scriptures that we read, a couple of times the Bible mentions he went away from the presence of the Lord. Mm. <laughs> you know, and when we go away from the presence of the Lord, that's when fear creeps in. But we must continue to stay in the presence of the Lord through faith in Him, mm. that He who has called us will carry us through. And, For and, me, and maybe not that fear crept in, but fear was uh, enhanced and increased, increased right? right? It increased. exponentially increased. Yeah. The fear was there. Hope saying, when you feel the fear, run to God rather than away from Him, mm -hmm. right? He's the one. If we run away, the fear just increases, mm -hmm. right? Yep. right? And becomes overwhelming. Mm -hmm. We've got to move to a second. I just want us to know then if someone says, well, I've been asked to do this, but I'm afraid, that we, we come with compassion, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And maybe even a testimony, mm -hmm. like we just heard from, from Hope. You know, hey, I felt that it was real, I checked with my leader, but I also remembered the word mm -hmm. that God had hidden in my heart mm -hmm. in Psalm 34 right. and verse 4. A, a second excuse that we see or f discover in the story of Jonah mm -hmm. is the idea, an excuse that, God, you're saying these people need to hear, but I don't think those people deserve to hear mm -hmm. that good news. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a certain neighborhood, yeah or a certain country, or a certain socioeconomic level. And by the way, there are people who think that the homeless don't deserve it, but there are also people who think the rich don't deserve it. Mm -hmm. right. We have all of these different ideas. Let's take a look at Jonah and see if we can learn something uh, about his attitude and actually his faulty view of God. Jonah chapter 1, I'd like to go back to verse 3, Kailinda, if you would read that. We heard it at the beginning, but what faulty view of God do you hear in this text? And verse 3, I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version. But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. So help me someone, <laughs> you're smiling, Stephanie. What faulty view of God is, is, is in that narrative? The belief that you can go away from God. Yeah. You can yeah. run away and he, he won't see you. Do you remember the Psalm of David uh, where he says, where, where can, can I go, go to flee from your go from your presence? Where can I flee from your presence, presence. if mm -hmm. I ascend to heaven yeah, or farthest parts of the sea. Mm -hmm. So there's a faulty view of God there, mm -hmm. isn't it? We've got to move to the next verse. Uh, Le Leah, if you would read for us in the same chapter 1, verse 12. Let's, let's see another faulty view of God. Listen carefully, because the faulty view of God will distort our idea about whether people deserve His grace or not. Mm -hmm. I'll be reading from the English Standard Version, Jonah chapter 1, verse 12. He said to them, Pick me up and hurl me into the sea. Then the sea will quiet down for you, for I know it is because of me that this great tempest has come upon you. What's faulty there? Anybody? Jason? That God desires like a sacrifice mm. to throw himself, but you know, we know the Bible says a contrite heart, a broken heart is what God wants, not a sacrifice. Right. So this is distorted view of yeah. God that somehow some if you throw me in, uh, God will somehow be happy. Yeah, yeah. What would bring joy to God is to obey the mission assignment, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Not to throw him into the sea. Mm -hmm. Well, let's go on to chapter three and verse four now when he finally, and you know the story, he's thrown overboard, God prepares a great fish, and I don't know how that happened. You say, that's not normal. <laughs> You're right. That was a miracle. <laughs> submarine catches him, <laughs> uh, an aqua submarine, and then vomits him up on the beach, and God says, uh, 
I haven't changed my mission <laughs> plan, which is to show my love mm. to the people of Nineveh, mm. and, and I want you to go. Mm. What, what do you see in chapter 3 and verse 4? John, would you read that verse for us? Mm -hmm. John 3, excuse me, Jonah 3 and verse 4. And, and what's missing there? Jonah chapter 3 and verse 4 from the English Standard Version, it says, Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's journey. And he called out, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. What's missing in this picture, folks? Pat. Addison? <laughs> Grace? Uh, redemption? Yeah, Com repent. Compassion. Right? Yeah. For the kingdom of God. Yeah. You remember yeah. what John the Baptist said, right? Yeah. There's, there's both a, a word of judgment, if yeah. you will, yeah. but also we need a word of grace. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Why doesn't Jonah say, if you don't repent, this will happen in 40 days, yeah. but if you repent, God is abundant in mercy and kindness to all those who call upon Him. Mm. Mm. Why? Why doesn't he say that, Samuel? I think the excuse is he doesn't want them to repent. He doesn't <laughs> want them to be saved. You know, he doesn't want them the salvation. Mm -hmm. He has this. Um, he has this thought that maybe God is more generous and more compassionate mm -hmm. than he is. Right. Right. But you're right. He doesn't want them to be saved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So these distorted pictures, well, it gets even worse. Oh <laughs> and uh, I'm going to ask Addison if you'd read Jonah 3, verse 10, and chapter 4 through verse 4. It's kind of startling because this is from a prophet of God. <laughs> Let's see what he says. And I'm reading from the King James Version, verse 10. And God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way. Mm. And God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them, and he did it not. But it displeased the Lord Jonah exceedingly, and he was very angry. And he prayed unto the Lord and said, I pray thee, O Lord, was not this my saying when I was yet in my country? Therefore I fled before unto Tarshish, for I knew that thou art a gracious God, and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repentest thee of the evil. Therefore now, O Lord, take, I beseech thee, my life from me, hmm. for it is better for me to die than to live. Then said the Lord, Doest thou well to be angry? This is one of the most successful evangelistic meetings hmm in the history of the planet. Mm -hmm. It's not a very good sermon, <laughs> right? right? But the Holy Spirit works, which is how any life has changed, That's right. and a whole city repents. Mm. And, and Jonah is what? Displeased. Exceedingly Ang angry. Anger. Exceedingly angry. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to ask you if you were God how you treat that prophet because fortunately God was as merciful and gracious as Jonah thought. Otherwise, he could have lost his life right there. Mm -hmm. John? You know, in some ways I almost think that, yes, God was trying to reach the city of Nineveh, but in bringing Jonah into this mission, he's also trying to reach Jonah right, mm -hmm. exactly. and to show that mercy and compassion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... Faulty view of God, or, or certainly a faulty view of salvation, mm -hmm. how could that get in the way for us in our mm -hmm. mission today, Kailinda? I think we all have biases, and it's unavoidable, but sometimes we want to project these same biases to God. Mm -hmm. We want God to agree with us that some people are better than others, or we can treat people in some way and treat other people in a different way. And we have to learn to say, God, how should I look at the world through your views mm -hmm. instead of 
you know, whether it's intentional in the case of Jonah or even unintentionally, please save me from looking at other people through biases that I've built up in my life. Can anybody think of someone that you met? I uh, see, Sabina, see your hand there. Can you think of someone that you met that your first impression was there is no way that God could save that person? Mm. Think about that, Sabina. Uh, you can... there, there have been people I encountered in ministry and in life in general that I found that they were very rooted in ideas or ways that definitely were not pleasing to God. But I personally <laughs> have not thought that they were unworthy. Mm -hmm. But I have found people that, you know, that they have thoughts, just as you were saying, like their ideas about salvation um, are rooted not in God's grace, but in an understanding that maybe through their works, they're going to achieve salvation. And then that themselves, because they believe so, they don't think they are worthy of mm. receiving God's grace. Mm. So um, that's also possible, right? Not, not only what we think about other people, but what we think about God's salvation may hinder us from coming to Jesus, right? Mm. I remember one time I was uh, speaking in Brazil, in Rio de Janeiro, and I was speaking in a church and there was a, a young man and he was he was a strong young man. He looked like a bodybuilder and he had tattoos over almost all of his body that I could see. And a first impression would be, why is he even here? <laughs> but as he listened to the word of God, he was leaning forward, mm -hmm. focusing. Mm -hmm. And when an invitation was given, this young man got up and walked forward. Amen. 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 Praise God. But sometimes, as Kylinda said, we may have biases. We say, well, that wealthy businesswoman is not going to be interested. All right. That homeless teenager is not going to be interested. But, but the question is rather, is God interested in them? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Samuel? There are two things that I think where, you know, how faulty views can hinder us from mission. One view is that there is this notion that God doesn't destroy and that everyone will be saved at the end. So if everyone is going to be saved, why do I need to go and share God's mission? On the opposite extreme is this view that God has already chosen some to be saved and some to be lost. So if God has chosen some to be saved, why do I go bother and, you know, share God's mm -hmm. mission? So mm -hmm. these are some views that exist in the world, very much so, that can, uh, faulty views mm. that can hinder. And of course, the God's Word of God challenges that mm. when it says today, mm -hmm. if you hear His voice, mm -hmm. don't harden your heart, mm -hmm. right? Mm. Yeah. There is a choice that we, we, yes. we make. Jason? Yeah, and also it could kind of tend to lean into the point where like, it's not my job to do it. Maybe someone else will come along and actually witness to them, you know, and kind of free yourself up mm. from actually trying to do that mission, even though God is calling you to do it. We'll come to that as another excuse in just a minute. That's good. You, you're moving forward. First excuse is fear. fear. I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. and, and we've all been there, and let's be compassionate if someone's struggling. Second excuse is Undeserving. they don't deserve, it. They don't deserve mm -hmm. it because of my faulty view of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even though in the back of his mind, he knew better, didn't he? Mm -hmm. yeah. But there's a third excuse that, that I think Jonah could definitely have thought about, mm -hmm. and that is... That is way too difficult <laughs> right. for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Someone mentioned there's one of me and there's that great city mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you're expecting me to go into the midst of that city that Nahum describes as full of blood, corpses stacked up, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. way too difficult for me. Think about a mission assignment God may give to you. A difficult one. You just imagine it. It may be inner city, it may be a foreign country, it may be the other side of the world. What are some excuses that you might come up with? I'm going to ask Hope to start with that. And God's going to, I know, Hope, you're thinking about getting some mission training, but then God throws you to, uh, let's say he throws you to Mongolia, okay? Mongolia. What, what are some things that might cause you hope to say, that's too difficult for me. I don't know the language. Okay. I don't know the culture. That's two. I don't two. know about any of the people. <laughs> yeah, so I've, I've got two right away. I don't speak Mongolian, mm -hmm. and I don't understand the culture. Mm -hmm. All right? 
Are those valid uh, concerns? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. uh, is it too difficult? No. Not for no. God. No. It depends how I'm looking, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I might have to say, and we've had a, one of our team members just recently learn another language. I don't even know what it looks like, mm -hmm. but someone just learned the Albanian language, right? Mm -hmm. So, but I could say, that's too difficult for me, a language, culture. What, what else might cause me to say, ooh, send somebody else. You said send someone else, right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. What, what other, we'd like to call them reasons, right? Yeah. But if God's calling us, all of his biddings are enabling, enabling so he's going to do. But from a human perspective, what else, John? No, it's not safe for me or my family. Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean, sending uh, hope uh, over to Mongolia without bodyguards, you know, <laughs> that's not safe. Or someone, I remember my wife and I as a young couple got a call to go to a part of the world where that they called the white man's grave. Mm. And I, I, I had fear <laughs> that I would bury children there, mm. Mm. right? Mm. Uh, it, it may not be safe. Sabina, you want to respond to that, one of those three, or is there something else that we might go, this is too difficult? I'm thinking of something else. It relates to what you shared, but it's something else like material deprivation. I think mm -hmm. it's depending on where you are going, how you're going, it really, you may not have the same facilities or amenities that you have on your home country, mm -hmm. right? Or even you do, but you're going to uh, spend a life with less than what you wished. Mm. So I'm going to ask you to share a testimony. Uh, Travis, you've been a lot of different countries, right? And I'm sure there were times when some of these, we'll call them reasons, they become excuses if we what? Finish the sentence. They become excuses if we We're don't go, don't don't go. Them. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, but they may still be reasons, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Don't know the language, don't know the culture, it's not safe. So those are reasons, but we go anyway mm -hmm. if we're focusing on the Lord and how mm -hmm. He's led in the past. Can you think of a time when you go, this is difficult, too hard for me? Well, Derek, uh, um, it's interesting you asked the question because as we're going through this study, I'm struggling internally mm. because I've just been asked to, to take um, an orphanage in Bangladesh on. Wow. And um, I'm like, Lord, I have way too much going on with other orphanages and different things. Like, I can't handle it. You shared with us in a previous study that, that you actually helped launch a, a, a new orphanage in Malawi, right? Mm -hmm. Started there putting roofs on churches, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Because you, your background is a, as a, in construction, but you, your background wasn't in running orphanages, right? <laughs> no. No. So, so now hear this, uh, what do you know about Bangladesh? You know, I don't know anything about Bangladesh. <laughs> I don't know anything. And I started looking up the tickets and my wife says, you have so much going on. Do you, can you really handle this? And so now I'm thinking as we're going through this study, it's like, you know, I think about uh, Martha being distracted with much serving. Is there a balance? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I certainly would want to help the orphanage in Bangladesh, but at the same time, can you have, be, have too much? Mm -hmm. And that's and, what and I'm what's, struggling with what's now. What's the big question? This is, this is real, right? It's right now. He's thinking mm -hmm. about it during this study. What is the big question I ask when someone says, I'd like you to come and, and do this. What do you think? Has the Holy Spirit called me to go? Mm. I, I think it's very hard because as I mentioned, we have internal biases, but we also have internal thoughts about what God might be saying. Mm. It's really difficult <laughs> to, to wisely discern the voice of God. You need prayer, you need scripture, and you need conversation with other people right. that can help guide you. There's a lot of counsel right there, isn't there? Because sometimes we might even be, uh, have like delusions of grandeur that I'm, the, I'm like the savior of the world. Right. Mm. And, 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 and what I'm hearing Kailinda say is, is this something the Holy Spirit is impressing mm. me to do? Mm. Or do I join with them in prayer that God would bring someone mm. just as he brought someone to Malawi? or as he did, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now, is it possible God's asking Travis to do that? Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. it could be. 
but we don't know for sure, do we? Sure. Mm -hmm. We have to listen. Sabina, what are you thinking? Um, I believe that indeed just going with what Travis was sharing, um, there needs to be an inner conviction that comes from God so that we can move forward. Uh, but then as we put the story of Jonah in perspective, one could say, oh, but Jonah was not convicted. So I would say there needs to be inner conviction based also on what the scripture is teaching. So if your reasons for not being convicted are going against a scripture's wisdom, then maybe you should follow a scripture's wisdom and respond to God. <laughs> but maybe if the reasons that you're, you are not having that inner conviction are aligned also with God's word, just as Travis was saying, like maybe I have too much on my, much on my plate. Do I have enough resources now? Am I the right person to do that? Mm -hmm. So those are all valid questions that we don't want to ignore as well. We've looked at three main excuses, and then Jason added a fourth one, which, which I actually wrote down as another excuse, but fear. Mm -hmm. And fear is, is real. It, mm -hmm. it, there can be real things, not just imaginary right. fear, right? Exactly. Real fear. Um, they don't deserve this. Mm -hmm. But that really comes from a faulty view of God because from God's perspective, how many people deserve salvation? Yeah. Everyone. Everyone, right? Everyone. <laughs> Why are you saying they don't deserve it? It's too difficult. Mm -hmm. That's real. I look, I go, I don't know the language, the culture. It's not safe. Um, another one Jason mentioned, someone else could do it better. Mm -hmm. Have you ever felt that way, mm -hmm. Samuel? I think uh, another excuse that I think of uh, particularly here in the story of Jonah, is that Jonah was a Jew, and the people of Nineveh, they were Gentiles. And so there is that racial tension, which is very, mm. which can often hinder us from going into missions. And by the way, those uh, Gentiles, as you call them, from Assyria, killed a lot of Jewish people. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. They came and, and slaughtered, mm -hmm. and destroyed a lot of cities. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there's this. But that's an interesting bias, too, that says, I, I don't want them to be saved, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, as you've listened to the study, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with some of our remotes. Uh, Lee, I'm going to start with you, if that's okay. I don't know the answer to, your, to the question. But as you hear this story of Jonah, we've looked at three or four excuses. What do you feel in your heart, and I'll give the rest of the team to share, is an excuse that you might easily grab onto that you need to just give to God. Say, God, I just need to give that to you because I, I do want to join you in your mission, whatever that looks like. In anything that God has called me to in my life, I have felt quite a measurable amount of fear and fear mainly for the unknown. You know, like we named so many reasons, maybe I don't feel like I can afford it, or I don't understand the culture, or I don't understand the language. Um, but all of these things can be denounced when we when we go to God and when we say, this is my fear. God understands that we're going to have fear, and he probably expects it, too, because he knows that we're human. Um, but like somebody said earlier, I think in instances where he knows we're going to be afraid, or like Jonah, when he knows that we're going to resist, maybe that call to mission is more for us and for our heart change than it is for the people that we're actually going to witness to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So just letting go of that fear. By the way, uh, I received some healing a few years ago where God directly said to me, Derek, I want to deliver you from all your fears. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was anointed that day, by the way, mm -hmm. because I grew up with a lot of fears. Mm -hmm. And some of them were from my family of origin. A lot of fears. Um, so I, I can relate to that. Uh, let's show some kindness to Jonah, right? Mm -hmm. Anybody else, as you, you looked at this study, something you just feel, Kylinda, is it the same or something else? You just say, God, I, I want to give that to you. I could easily grab onto that, uh, make it a reason when actually it could be an excuse holding me back. Well, briefly, uh, several years ago, I had the opportunity to work in a lab in a different country. So I'm a scientist, it's my first day, and we're eating lunch with my new colleagues, and they said, well, what are you doing this weekend? And I thought, oh, you know, I, I, maybe I shouldn't mention going to church or Sabbath because, 
you know, in science, it could be perceived as someone who embraces faith as they're not intelligent mm -hmm. or they're intolerant mm -hmm. or bigoted or, you know, mm -hmm. maybe it's not appropriate in this culture to discuss religion. So I said nothing. Mm -hmm. And then someone else came to the table, another scientist sat down, not of my faith, and started to pray for his food. Everyone in the table went silent and then finished and we all started talking again. And I think it was like it was a personal rebuke to me because it, it wasn't quite, you know, the same shade of fear. I wasn't afraid that they would, you know, hurt me or, right. or say things, but, you know, I, pride and apathy, they play a role in, in how might might people perceive me and I want to ask God's you know forgiveness and grace to say what do you want me to do and can I be open to do that no matter the circumstance and and we need to recognize that there is a time and place to right. share mm -hmm. more mm -hmm. even Jesus said there are some things I would share with you but you cannot bear them now right. mm -hmm. so we don't have to share everything right yes. away but right? but you were feeling there you use the word rebuke, or at least a loving reminder mm -hmm. from the Holy Spirit. Um, when I ask you to do something, don't be afraid, right? Mm -hmm. don't, don't let that hold you back. Nancy. Derek, I'd also like to mention um, comfort. Some of us don't want to go off somewhere else because we're comfortable. Right. We know God, we're happy in our church, and maybe going off to another country um, with our families and the grandparents won't get to be with the children, you know, things like that. But Jesus says, um, you can remind me of where in scripture that um, when we, sometimes we are called to, to, to leave. Um, Father and mother. Yes, yeah. yes, and, and great will be our reward. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. I wanted to mention comfort. Comfort, right? Mm. Uh, because there may be bed bugs there or snakes <laughs> that I don't like or, mm. or people that I don't like. Mm. There are lots of reasons. We, we need to move to Isaiah, and I'll give you a chance to share at the end, because Isaiah finds his way past all excuses. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a clue. And Stephanie, if you could read for us in the book that bears the prophet's name, in Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 7, I think there's a clue in this passage as to how he abandons all excuses. Mm -hmm. Because verse 8 uh, is a verse we'll read after you've read 1 through 7. All right, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Mm -hmm. Above it stood seraphim, each one had six wings, and with two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And he cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door were shaken by the voice of him who cried out, and the house was filled with smoke. So I said, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of, peop of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal which he had taken off the had taken with the tongs from the altar and he touched my mouth with it and said behold this has touched your lips your iniquity is taken away your sin purged and now the first half of verse 8 also i heard the voice of the lord saying whom shall i send and who will go for us so there's lots of excuses because he's going to be given a different, a difficult assignment. Mm -hmm. But the second half of verse 8, how does he respond? Then I said, here am I, send me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> mm. What was it in the first seven verses? There's something there, isn't there? It makes sense from all the mm. things we've been studying. What was it in the first seven verses that gave him the courage 
to abandon all excuses, call them reasons, and say, here am I, mm. send me. Mm. Addison? He had an experience yeah. with Jesus, he had yes. an experience with God. He yes. saw the glory of the Lord, the character mm. of God, and, and uh, that changed him. Mm. That changed him and, 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 pers and moved upon his heart to say, here I am, Lord, I, I want to serve, I want to serve you. You're beautiful. Amazing. So that's one thing. Stay, stay with us now. He saw the glory of the Lord. He had a revelation of the glory of the Lord. What else, Samuel? I think the verse also talks about how your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned mm -hmm. for. Okay, so something was happening to him spiritually. What else? Perspective. There was something else that really <laughs> big that happened there in those verses. What was it? Yes, Kailanda? He was touched by the fire from the altar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something supernatural happens mm -hmm. when we abandon all of our excuses, and it mm -hmm. comes in the context of that encounter with the living God, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the freedom from all of the shame and guilt and sin and all of that, something supernatural happens that enables us to say, Yes. Stephanie. He recognized who he was in the presence of God. Mm -hmm. he, understand, he understood that he was a human being and he was in the presence of the Almighty King. Mm -hmm. So someone's watching today and you're saying, I want to be the woman of God, man of God, mm -hmm. join God in his mission, but, but I've been, honestly, I called them reasons, but maybe they're excuses. I need a revelation of the glory of God mm -hmm. and I need, I need something supernatural to happen in mm -hmm. me. Is God able to do that? Mm -hmm. I hope you're raising your hand and saying, yes, because He is, and He's done yeah. it. It's recorded in Scripture. People, I'm sure Mary, when she was told the Holy Spirit will come upon you, she had to wrestle with fear. This is too difficult. But surrendering and trusting a loving God to say, God, mm. here am I. Send me. Is that, is that your prayer today? Mm. I want to pray for you just now. Mm. Father in heaven, we didn't just come to study today to rebuke people for making excuses. We came so we could see how easy it is to have reasons not to go. But we've learned that an encounter with you, that yes, your supernatural blessing can enable us to do whatever you ask us to do. Today, we just want to say, whatever that looks like in the mission, Lord, we're available. Here we are. Please send us. And when we see miracles, we'll give you all of the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thanks for joining us for Hope Sabbath School. Go out and be a blessing to those around you.